All right, here we go. Welcome into Philadelphia Eagles now by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Senior. Hope all of you out there have been having an awesome Labor Day weekend. And no matter where you are or how you're tuned in, greatly appreciate you for making Philadelphia Eagles now a part of your day. Coming to you from home because I want to chop it up and talk birds. I posted on our community tab. If you have any questions that you want to ask me, let's open up the floor and let's talk Eagles news. Let's talk Eagles rumors. Let's discuss this roster. Look ahead to week one against the Detroit Lions because a week from today, folks, the Eagles will be in action in the Motor City in Detroit. You can expect a post-game show after the game from me and, of course, videos every single day this week. So if you're excited for the season to start with the regular season officially a week away, I want you to hit that thumbs up by kind of like the video because I imagine everybody is stoked with this Eagles roster being as stacked as it is to embark on the 2022 campaign. Also, before I start answering your questions, it's Labor Day. And I'm off today, but like I said, fly Eagles fly. I wanted to interact with the bird gang. What have you all been up to throughout Labor Day weekend? I understand people are tuned in from literally all across the globe, but for those of you in the Philadelphia region, maybe you're at the Jersey Shore, maybe you're doing something else, let me know what you've been up to throughout Labor Day weekend because I imagine a lot of you have off tomorrow as well. So without further ado, let's start answering your questions. So many good ones that really just reaches far and wide. So want to begin here with Spirit Hunter. TV. Appreciate you for being a loyal subscriber of the channel and all of you out there who are subscribed. Do you think this is Howie Roseman's best offseason he has had so far or is, a, or is there a better offseason he's had before this one? And this goes along the lines of a question that I was also asked about how would you compare Roseman this offseason to 2017. It's a pretty interesting conversation. Now, it's hard to measure because... The Eagles ended up winning the Super Bowl in Super Bowl 52, dethroning Bill Belichick and Tom Brady in that absolutely epic game from Minnesota. But you look at some of the key moves back in 2017. These are the moves that kind of come to mind here. They traded for Jay Ajayi. That was one of the best backs on that roster and ended up having a huge impact in the Super Bowl. You signed LeGarrett Blunt, who was tremendous in his lone season in Philadelphia, made a trade for Ronald Darby, who... May have been the Eagles' number one corner that year. I know Jalen Mills is pretty solid as well. Traded for Tim Jernigan on a draft day trade. He had a big impact on that defensive side of the football. Drafted Derek Barnett, who hasn't lived up to first-round expectations, but he did recover the fumble on the Brandon Graham strip sack, and I thought he did have a rookie good rookie campaign and had an impact on that team throughout that Super Bowl season. The Nigel Bradham acquisition was sneaky good because we know that this organization really has just ignored the linebacker position, but Bradham was excellent that year. And then they brought in and signed Nick Foles in NFL free agency after he was like a journeyman and he was a castaway after a couple of down years with the Rams, as well as the Chiefs. And he ended up being the Super Bowl MVP. If it's anybody else replacing Carson Wentz, not sure the birds end up bringing home that first ever Lombardi trophy. The parade, by the way, my goodness, great memories. So that Eagles offseason was great, but this one's been awesome too. A.J. Brown trade. I thought Howie Roseman did a really good job in the draft. C.J. Gardner-Johnson. This team is just really so deep at basically every single position with some premium players. So that's kind of how I compare those off seasons. Next one coming in from Ray. Do you think we should trade for Saquon Barkley, depending on his asking price, top five running back when healthy, and he could revive his career with our offensive line? That last part, I'm sure that Saquon Barkley would love to run behind this offensive line because it's one of the best in the NFL, if not the best. My problem with Saquon Barkley, I think he has like a $10 million base salary and he has been injured the last couple of years and hasn't been the same player that he was early in his career when coming out of Penn State. Guy was absolutely tremendous and just a special, unique blend of explosion, athleticism, pass-catching ability, Obviously, running the football with physicality, but also finesse. My kind of team-building philosophy, Ray, 
I don't like paying running backs more than $10 million. I would never draft a running back in the first round. I think you can find really quality ones as UDFAs or later in the draft or cheap in free agency. So I wouldn't go after Saquon Barkley going into the final year of his deal, making that much money on his rookie deal. I'd probably say pass on that one. Ben 100 OXYT. If you had to put together your all-time Eagles dream team, who would be on it? Only players that have been on the team currently or in the past. I like this. So I'll put on my general manager hat, by the way. Go Birds. Um, at quarterback, I'm going Donovan McNabb. In the early 2000s, it was Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, and Donovan McNabb. Now, they obviously had longer and more successful careers for a long time as compared to five. But Donovan McNabb, when he was in his prime, he was right up there with Tom Brady and Peyton Manning. And he was a special quarterback. And I don't think that he gets enough love in Philadelphia. I know this is a very controversial discussion point on 94 WIP, 97.5 The Fanatic, and among all fans. But look, in my generation, five NFC Championship games, four in a row, a trip to the Super Bowl, high-level play for a long time. McNabb, in my opinion, best quarterback in the history of the franchise. At running back and going Brian Westbrook, especially in today's modern NFL, I think he'd be even better. He was a fantasy darling before fantasy darlings became a thing. Dual threat running back who was just the preeminent back for a couple of years there in terms of versatility. Wide receiver, Terrell Owens, Harold Carmichael, Mike Quick, Deshaun Jackson. I love the blend there of different body types, tight end. Zach Ertz, offensive line, a lot to choose from. Jason Peters, Jason Kelsey, Brandon Brooks, John Runyon, and or Lane Johnson. And I'm going to throw this guy in there, even though he kind of ran into some mental issues, but people don't really realize how good Sean Andrews was coming out of Arkansas for a brief amount of time. If I had him on a team for a year or two, Sean Andrews is certainly up there. And then defense, my gosh, a whole host of players you can choose from. Reggie White. Jerome Brown, Fletcher Cox, Jeremiah Trotter, Axeman, Seth Joyner, Bill Berge, Eric Allen, Brian Dawkins, Troy Vincent, Tom Brookshire, if you want to go all the way back to the 50s, that's a really good team right there. Those are a lot of the players who I'd have on that unit. Next one coming in from Eagles fan. Do you think if Miles Sanders does not perform well or gets injured again, we should keep him? And if so, we start Gainwell or somewhere else, uh, someone else, excuse me, or draft or sign somebody else out there. Big year for Miles Sanders, obviously, going into the final year of his rookie deal. If he doesn't pan out and if he doesn't have a big year, I wouldn't hate bringing him back if the dollar amount is discounted because I think he's pretty solid. And again, I'm not willing to pay big money to a back. If he wants 10 plus million dollars, see you, Miles. Thank you for a couple of really splash plays, but a lot of inconsistencies and injury issues. I think he's a good quality back. I think Kenneth Gainwell is good as well. I think the Eagles are going to be okay at that running back position. Nay Sweats, how do you feel about this roster as it is right now? Do you think Devontae Smith is going to break out this year? Devontae Smith broke the franchise record for the most amount of receiving yards for a rookie overtaking Deshaun Jackson. I think he's in store for a 1,000-yard season potentially. How do I feel about this roster right now? This is a really, really good roster. Jalen Hurts is the only question mark, in my opinion, and then safety. And I like Jalen Hurts. He just has to take that next step as a passer. John LaCorey, hopefully I pronounced that right, with Jonathan Gannon likely being gone next year, fired if he does poorly, or hired as a head coach if he does well, who are some defensive coordinator candidates that the Eagles should consider? That's a good question. I'm not sure if Jonathan Gannon is a head coach worthy type of candidate for other teams out there. I understand he interviewed with the Houston Texans for that job, and they went with Lovey Smith, which was a shock because Lovey Smith was garbage at the University of Illinois. Jonathan Gannon, big year for him too. He is kind of like an analytical darling in terms of how he calls defenses. That's why he didn't blitz a lot last year because there have been changes with what offenses are doing, spreading the football out, and a lot of guys are countering that with more defensive backs um, and less blitz pressures. If Jonathan Gannon leaves, whether he's fired or whether he gets a head coaching job, Vic Fangio is out there, Scranton zone. I think he's really special. Now, he's traditionally run a 3-4 front. I don't like 3-4. I kind of like four down linemen. But if he changes his philosophy from 3-4 to 4-3, 
I wouldn't hate that. Those Bears defenses a couple of years ago were really good before he kind of flamed out as the head coach for the Denver Broncos. Bryce Watkins, do you think N'Kobe Dean will take over at Mike Linebacker by midseason? He looked really solid in the preseason. Maybe, but they like TJ Edwards, man. Um, you know, he's going to be wearing that green dot. He's going to be communicating with the coaching staff as the play caller. And I understand that a lot of times that is the middle linebacker, but like they're not just going to give those duties to some scrub. And that tells me that they like TJ Edwards. As I've continued to say, I think Kaiser White, one of the more underrated signings across the entire NFL. I think N'Kobe Dean is going to get a lot of time. And I think that he could earn himself, you know, a legitimate role on this team. Not sure if it's going to be starter, we're at that Mike spot, but he did look really solid in the preseason, and I absolutely love that draft pick if the medicals continue to check out. I end careers. We pivot to you. Who do you think will lead the squad in interceptions? Darius Slay? Maybe even James Bradbury because teams might not target Slay as often, and they might decide to go away from Slay to Bradbury, and with that, he gets more opportunities at picks. I think it's one of those two. C.J. Gardner-Johnson, he's put up some pretty good interception numbers, too, over time. Underdog Records, I already know this answer, but here goes it. Why did the Eagles sign Derek Encroachment Barnett, even though you know he has more penalties than sacks? Dude, I'm with you on the penalties. They come at inopportune times. They are head scratchers, and they are ill-advised penalties, especially the roughing the passer calls. I like the aggressiveness. Have to find a way to harness it. The encroachment stuff, it's him trying to get... An early jump, I understand that because he's not like freaky twitchy. He's more of a power bull rusher type. But I actually think that Derek Barnett is better than what people give him credit for. The QB pressures is a big number that I look at. I almost look at sacks like I look at wins and losses for a pitcher. They don't completely tell the story. ERA does. I kind of look at that with pass rushers in terms of sacks. But for what he's getting paid for a solid edge rusher, I actually don't hate Derek Barnett, Michael D, will we make any more big moves or is, or is our roster ready to compete? Maybe at the trade deadline for running back, you know, a trade for JGI, something like that. But I don't see anything monumental happening following that CJ Garner Johnson trade. And now that Andre Dillard's injured, not sure he gets dealt either. James Messina, can I send you all my resume? My guy, hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at Chase underscore senior. We're uh, growing the chat sports family, no doubt. Loving it down here in Dallas as we continue to expand. River Lake, do you think we are overwhelmed with talent so much that we are overlooked or right where the analysis should have us as an average team that could win the NFC East but not a playoff game? I think the Eagles can win a playoff game. They're good on defense. They're really good along the lines. I think that's how you win in today's NFL. Obviously, you know, Jalen Hurts has to take that next step. That's really the big question here. Michael D., what are your predictions for the Lions game? Score and who will shine? I think Jalen Hurts has a big, big game. Um, I think A.J. Brown, they're going to try to take a deep shot to him. I think that the Lions are feisty. I think that they're one of those sneaky teams in the NFL who could upset some teams this year. They played really hard last year under Dan Campbell, and they were in a lot of games against quality competition. I think the Birds win, though. I think it's going to be close, though. I'm going to go 27-24. Couple more left. D, do you think Jalen Hurts will take a tremendous leap like Josh Allen did when he got digs now that Howie paired Hurts with AJ Brown? Look, I mean, Josh Allen took an enormous step. He went from 55% completion percentage to 70 and almost won MVP last year. So his progression, his development has been unbelievable. I don't think that Jalen Hurts is going to take that passing leap. I do think that Jalen Hurts will take a leap, though, and having A.J. Brown is huge. Yepa, are the Eagles getting a big power back, or are we rolling with the running backs that we have? I think they're going to stay put right now. You, you, they signed Trey Sermon. We covered that the other day, and I think in this system, he'll be a better scheme fit. Malcolm Baldwin, do you think Jalen Hurts will throw for more than 30 touchdowns this year? I don't think so. He threw for 16 last year and ran for 10, combined 26. I don't think that he throws for more than 30. That's a pretty big number. Grievous, do you think the Eagles could get Kareem Hunt? I think that ship has sailed. Maybe it's a trade deadline type of acquisition. And then last one, Eric Elsinger. What is the biggest weakness right now? Probably safety. I'd say safety is the biggest weakness on this team. CJ Gardner-Johnson, he's played 80 snaps at safety throughout his career. A lot of it at nickel. So I'm going to go safety.
All right, that does it for our mailbag. Appreciate all of you for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you've been up to over Labor Day weekend, and we'll be back tomorrow on Philadelphia Eagles Now.